Assalamualaikum and good evening everyone. Uh, those uh, who are fasting, Salam Ramadan. Uh, the session will start at 5 o'clock sharp. But before that, I thought I'd just do a, um, a warm-up uh, introduction. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is our uh, second session for online series. And um, the, this online series, uh, Council has uh, decided uh, that it will be a permanent feature uh, for PEM to provide services to members. Um, we have fixed uh, two days uh, or two times actually uh, in a week. Uh, Thursday is between 5 to 7 and Saturday is between 10 to 12. So watch out for um, website or email uh, and look out for online logo if you are interested to uh, join in. So um, all the we have a, a, a full uh, tech technical support team. Um, we have Gary Spitzer who focusing on this uh, online series and we also have two secretariat, um, Nurul and Nani uh, assisting on us uh, on this. For um, technical support, we have Gary Spitzer, uh, Salam and Firdaus uh, working on this uh, intensively uh, to prepare for our session. Um, also to uh, inform on uh, CPD points, um, Council has applied to Lembaga Architect Malaysia for CPD points on uh, for online series. Um, we have received a good response. So, um, but for the for due for uh, due to the requirements by Lembaga, the CPD points will only be applicable for Zoom viewers because uh, LAM's requirement is that uh, the organizer need to have a continuous uh, participation record. So I'll explain to you in a minute. Okay, it's five o'clock now. So let's start officially. Um, welcome everyone. Assalamualaikum and a very good evening. For those who are fasting, uh, Salam Ramadan. I hope everyone is safe uh, and well over this MCO. Welcome to our second series, second session actually uh, on PEM online series, which will be a permanent feature uh, uh, as a service uh, provided by PEM to members. So we have fixed Thursdays uh, 5 to 7 and Saturdays 10 to 12 as online series um, time. Uh, so watch out for the emails and posters on website uh, for the upcoming uh, series. Um, on behalf of PEM and CPD committee, um, we would like to thank all members for your continuing support on PEM programs. We appreciate your understanding and patience um, while the team, the technical team, get into the groove in perfecting uh, our online uh, series. CPD points for online series have been applied and applicable to viewers uh, on Zoom only, not on, on FB Live. Uh, to fulfill LAMS requirements for CPD points, organ organizers need to record a continuous um, participation. So we have uh, set up a system. At some point during the session, there will be a pop-up code uh, twice as a sign-in code and a sign-out code. Uh, please jot down these codes. You need these two codes to complete a short questionnaire via a link which will be uh, provided at the end of the session. Let's move on to the series uh, today. Um, our discussion today is uh, focusing on circular economy. Uh, as a first step, we will do just the introduction, uh, focusing on definition, concept, and implementation. Uh, the two speakers with us today are uh, technologist Dr. Zak Zairo Mohamad Noor and Professor Emeritus Dato Architect Dr. Elia Saleh. Uh, PEM actually has initiated a group of architects, experts uh, and technology providers to discuss on circular economy with the aim to consolidate efforts to have all the technologies available uh, to become more accessible, uh, to be implemented into practice. Our aim for the year is actually to share um, uh, a half-day forum 
on circular economy for 2,500 residential community. The idea is actually uh, to uh, create a loop uh, of resources, consumption and waste uh, so that the residential community will be self-sustained uh, with minimum independence to central infrastructure. What it means is that nothing or minimum goes in and nothing goes out. It's a very ambitious um, idea, but we're working on it. Um, so our today's session is uh, introduction and there will be a few more series uh, between today and, uh, uh, and our main event for the Half Day Forum. Um, Let's begin our today's session. Um, we, we will have three parts, presentations, panel discussions, and Q&A session. I will guide you through, uh, throughout the session today. Our spe first speaker is uh, technologist Dr. Zak Zairo Muhammad Noor. He is a registered professional with LAM, um, obtained his PhD from Technology University of Delft, Netherlands. Prior to serving UPN, uh, he has experience in managing pro projects in uh, government agencies as well as architectural practices. Um, circular economy is one of his area of expertise. Our second speaker is Professor Emeritus Dato Architect Dr. Elia Saleh. Uh, he was conferred Professor Emeritus by UTM in 2013 and honoured with Architecture Education Award by LAM in 2015 now serving as a professor at IIUM, uh, International U Islamic University Malaysia, with area of expertise in sustainable development goal, um, circular economy, um, energy efficiency, among others. So without further ado, I hand over the console to uh, technologist Dr. Zach Zairol to start his presentation. Over to you, Zach. All right. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <coughs> Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Now I'm sharing my slide. Uh, can you see the slide now? No. Not yet. Huh? Okay. All right, so it's light on, okay? Yes, yes. All right, so uh, for today, I heard that, uh, uh, okay, before that, uh, a very good uh, afternoon to all uh, and, and happy Ramadan to all Muslims. Uh, so today uh, is basically an introduction to circular economy. Uh, we know that uh, this term is still, um, still new to some of us. So, um, Today is much more towards a definition, concept, and how it's been implemented already in other part of the world. Um, and uh, this is a sort of like a sharing session for all. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> all right. Uh, definition of a CE as um, I think as uh, the most common and the, the most uh, popular terms is an. It's, uh, it's a process of industrial system that is restorative or regenerative by intention and design. And um, as, as short, um, CE can be described as uh, whatever waste that you produce uh, can be considered as food. So it is something which is, you know, a circular. Uh, at the moment, we are doing a linear economy. But now we are talking about something circular whatever you give is what you get back. So uh, in the traditional linear economy, we use resources to make products. Uh, we generate a wide ranges of waste and pollutants along the way, uh, including throwing away the product at the end of its life. It's a case of take, make and dispose. Okay. So imagine that at the moment we have, we produce something, at the end it becomes waste and nothing can be uh, reproduced out of it. <clears throat> So um, I would uh, explain in terms of the bioregional's vision of a truly circular economy is one where the concept of waste simply no longer exists. All right, in a truly circular economy, every element of what we create or produce is recognized as a resource and input to another part of the system. 
thinking in this way means we have to completely design our ways across all stages of the life cycle. Okay, so uh, a bit of background of this uh, circular economy. I have uh, a video from uh, the gurus of uh, circular economy, which is uh, from William Stahill. Actually, if you ever came across uh, terms like cradle to cradle and also biomimicry, those are actually elements that uh, support the idea of the circular economy. Now, let's watch this video. I will just show a bit of the video and then uh, I will give a summary. Whether clothing, furniture, electronics, vehicles or buildings, we surround ourselves with objects that we use only for a limited time. The resources which are extracted from planet Earth to make these objects are used once or twice and then dumped. Yet the resources on our planet are non-renewable and finite except for rainfall, sunlight, biomass, animals and people. And our global commons have become waste dumps. Within 60 years, we have filled the oceans with millions of low-tech plastic objects and space with thousands of high-tech objects. So, the present industrial economy is not compatible with the natural resources and waste dumps available on planet Earth. More of the same is no business model for success. We need to create higher standards of living from a more intelligent resource use. More from less. I have an idea how to do it. Circularity. Circularity. That is how nature works. Water, biomass, CO2, seasons. Nature works in cycles. Waste free. Water and land are special cases. Sea level rise and erosion permanently reduce the land surface. And deforestation will diminish rainfall. As a result, droughts and wildfires may become more frequent and vicious. So. For thousands of years, mankind was part of nature, functioning in loops. Use it up, wear it out, make it do and do without, was the motto. But this was a circular economy of poverty and scarcity. 200 years ago, the Industrial Revolution uncoupled people from nature. Human ingenuity turned coal and iron into steam engines to replace horses, enabling men to produce enough food and shelter for all and provide faster mobility on land and water. Hundred years ago, human ingenuity developed electricity, opening up the vertical dimension in cities and turning night into day. And oil complemented coal as abundant energy supply. Then, chemistry, engineering and finance opened the floodgates of mass production and turned industrialized countries into societies of abundance, allowing the world population to triple, billions of people to increase their health and quality of life, and democracy to flourish within the last 70 years. This is industrial man's success story. But abundance also led to oversupply, saturated markets and omnipresent waste. We lost control of our waste dumps because the industrial economy is linear. The industrial economy is like a river. You cannot stop it or you cause a flood. So the, the goods that are produced have to be sold 
and the goods have to be produced to maintain the income and GDP wealth for the nations. Growth in the industrial economy means throughput. It means producing more, whereas in the circular economy, growth can be measured as an increase in quantity and quality of stocks. In other words, industry that ends in a cul-de-sac. It is also about lost liability control. At the point of sale, liability for the use of objects and their end-of-life waste passes from manufacturers to buyers, consumers, to you and me, to society at large, nobody's liability. The cost will be borne by the taxpayer. Now the circular industrial economy is applying circularity to the stocks of manufactured objects, cultural and human capital. But this is a circular economy of abundance, not of scarcity. And it is driven by human ingenuity and social all right, <clears throat> so those are uh, some introduction, okay, in uh, what, uh, how we define um, circular economy. This is from the Walter Sahel. Uh, he's an architect and industrial analyst. So he came up with this uh, idea of uh, how uh, circular economy essentially um, become uh, one a new business model. And especially this is a... Uh, I would say much more popular towards uh, manufacturer compared to our construction industry, but it's coming. Uh, the construction industry now, um, uh, more more of construction industry now adopting this uh, philosophy. Uh, I would uh, <clears throat> uh, give uh, some example, okay, for you to imagine what would be the circular in the future. Because uh, when we talk about circular economy, it's about a new business model. So when uh, we talk about new business model, it means that um, uh, a new business which is uh, can disrupt uh, current uh, current uh, business model, um, it will be uh, emphasized in the in the uh, manufacturing and also will be emphasized by the uh, by the new business in the future. <clears throat> so this is another example. Imagine the, in the future, uh, you need some new running shoes. Okay, imagine uh, you, you you need a uh, new running shoes. Um, traditionally, you will buy these uh, shoes in in a shop. Um, but then in the new future, you take a few photos of your feet and then order a new custom fitted ones through an app that enables three D printing. So your shoes will be made entirely from recycled materials and offering high-tech performance and uh, with built-in sensors, okay? Linked to the internet that enable your shoes to collect and exchange data. So you arrange the collect, uh, to collect your bespoke shoes from a local sports store and you bring in your old running shoes for recycling to get a discount code. At the store, you meet with your fitness advisor who not only checks the fit by filming you and analyzing your gait, uh, but also so uh, gives some information for future uh, use of your shoes. So this store shares this information with your shoe manufacturing manufacturing brand as part of their license to stock. So uh, in uh, circular economy, the customer relationship is very important to prolong the business so that you uh, you can serve uh, customers in the long run, not only in a short, short term. <clears throat> we are talking about, uh, although we are talking about model, model building, we are also um, in, in the manufacturing sector, they are also coming up with a modular phone. This is also another example where the module can be replaced. Okay, according to the specification that you need. So just watch the video, this is a very short video.
Okay, so the idea of this modular telephone is, uh, you know, is actually um, not like the conventional uh, handphone that we use uh, at the moment. Where normally a handphone that we use uh, only lasted maybe uh, for um, one year or two. After that, we 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 gonna change to new models that came out uh, in, in in the market. So the idea of this modular phone is that. Uh, if you want to increase the spe specification of the telephone, so you just change the accessory and then you can get a um, uh, new, um, not, not a new phone, it's actually the, uh, the same phone, but with a better specification. So this is actually uh, one of the uh, circular economy that have been uh, already been implemented. This company, Fairphone uh, 2, is from Netherlands. So they came up with this idea where you just upgrade, you can upgrade, According to your um, affordability, you can just upgrade anytime. And if there's a new um, a specification came up uh, in, the, in the market, you can just change uh, some of the components and then you can upgrade and uh, also downgrade for, for any time. All right. Um, this is also been uh, tested by Philips Rico and uh, also Heineken. Uh, Heineken won uh, 2019. Uh, branding for uh, implementing circular economy. I think uh, most of you already seen, uh, for example, Ricoh business model, the photocopy machine, uh, not not uh, being uh, sold to the customer anymore, but the performance of the uh, uh, photocopy machine is being uh, used. Okay, uh, what? Uh, how many copies that you use uh, in the entire month or entire uh, year that you've been charged but the photocopy machine itself is not being uh, being sold to the customer so it's about performance economy and then the um, the company uh, did not need to have or to produce another bulk of uh, photocopy machine because it's too big and also it's involved a lot of components so rather than um, selling the products they selling the service okay it's also happened with philips uh, you can also i'll just show this uh, short video <coughs> what is philips circular lighting and how does it fit within the principles of a circular economy as opposed to a linear economy the circular economy focuses on bringing as many materials as possible back into the production loop make use return we've completely rethought the way in which lighting solutions can contribute to a circular economy. Philips Circular Lighting brings together four key components. Light as a service, circular product design, reverse logistics, and collaboration. In our light as a service business model, you don't need to make an upfront investment. You save from day one. Your contract includes maintenance, reverse logistics support, everything you'll ever need. But it all starts with a smart circular. Okay, in this Philips business model, uh, as mentioned in the uh, in the YouTube, um, Philips actually leasing the service, the light as a service, okay, rather than uh, selling the the unit, the the box. So, um, uh, in order to uh, get a full or long longer customer relationship, they also provide the maintenance of the product. I think at the moment also in the manufacturing, in the car manufacturing, it's, al it's already been uh, implemented, especially by Renault. Um, and it's already been implemented, uh, in fact, in Malaysia, where Renault, I'm, okay, I'm not actually promoting Renault, but this is uh, uh, one of the uh, circular economic approach by Renault, where you pay for the uh, leasing of the, of the car. You don't need to buy the car. You don't need to have a commitment. You just pay for the monthly uh, leasing, and the maintenance of the car will be run by the um, by the company. And then after a certain period of time, you can return the car, and then the car will be uh, you know will be remanufactured re and will be refurbished for um, a new car. So these are already some of the ideas that being implemented in the manufacturing industry. Now let's look into the problems in the construction industry. <coughs> As we know, um, the construction industry involves a lot of waste uh, every year, and uh, we can say that uh, almost 48 million tons, actually more, okay, of building waste produced each year by the construction industry. Now, um, 
this is actually the problems in, in the world, not only in Malaysia. So how are we going to do about it? Uh, because what we think that right now is uh, a very linear economy. What we produce, okay, for example, uh, the company produced uh, aluminium and then it's stored uh, in, the, uh, in the building. And then after the building been uh, uh, destroyed or they uh, repurposed, the aluminium will go into uh, scrap and then um, become a waste. So we are talking about okay the, the first fabric which is uh, the cities. Uh, how we are going to introduce uh, circular economy in the cities? All right, this is also another short videos. By 2050, two thirds of us will live in cities. Already, cities are where we consume 75% of our natural resources, produce over 50% of global waste, and emit up to 80% of global greenhouse gases. These are consequences of our linear take-make-waste model. But cities are also places which concentrate on innovation, education, finance, culture, and where people exchange ideas. Pragmatic and acting quickly, they play a leading role in politics and the economy. They can lead the way to develop a circular economy. The circular economy can help cities to thrive and become more livable and resilient, helping to meet urban priorities around housing, transport and economic development. The circular economy can also help cities meet the sustainable development goals and their climate targets. It starts with three principles. Design out waste and pollution. Avoid parts created within cities when needed, using materials that can be reused, recycled or composted. Making use of untapped space in buildings, transport and using renewable energy to power the city, making them healthier and cleaner. Keep products in use. So products are no longer used just once, they're reused, repaired and refurbished. And people gain access to the things they need, be it space, products or transport, in new ways. For example, through sharing rather than owning, and connecting people to their neighbours and communities. And cities are planned so that materials flow. Regenerate natural systems so that valuable nutrients return to the soil and air and water quality improves in the city and in the countryside beyond. Ready to get started? The element... Okay, to uh, go for the information, you can uh, also log to www.ellenmacarthurfoundation.org because um, Ellen MacArthur is one of the foundation that are proposing uh, and propagating this uh, circular economy. So uh, as uh, one of the keywords uh, just now in the slide mentioned about <clears throat> everything in the city should uh, you know come back and then reuse and refurbish and also about sharing okay uh, thinking about in, in architecture and built environment how can we uh, create a something uh, that can be shared by others we now we have a, uh, several apps several uh, technologies that allow this uh, sharing for example grab car we have uh, uh, other things that are uh, using this sharing uh, mechanism. So we look into the circular economy in built environment, looking into the uh, design life of the building assets and the layers of the building asset was another common theme. And the structure which has a long design life, durability and ease of maintenance are appropriate strategies. So thinking of uh, the, uh, the new model of uh, uh, circular economy in the built environment, it's a long durable product which can last and then repurpose for another uh, for new purpose. So I would uh, take by Tillman Klein. This is quite recent by uh, also by Tio Dev. <coughs> uh, he looks into the regions, cities, buildings, products, and materials. Okay, just now we 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 already mentioned about uh, and show several examples from materials. And then it goes to products and uh, let's look into building as an architect and as a, a practitioner in the built environment you, you need to look into the products how the products can be not only recycled can be repurposed okay uh, there are some studies from uh, also to that 
you know, at the moment the brick uh, that we use in the construction, once it uh, being uh, um, being used, um, no longer can be used in the in the next uh, production. But then uh, think about the you know the um, the uh, cements that you use. You can uh, you can use plastic, for example, and then you can uh, use it as uh, to to dismantle the brick. So this is another strategy that can be looked in the built environment. Um, and designing for a circular economy, according to Becker et al. 2017, uh, the following can be the six principles and can be the guidance for the circular economy. First, design for product attachment and trust because uh, the customer need to trust you in order to have a longer customer relationship. Uh, design for product durability, as I mentioned just now. Design for standardization and compatibility. Um, design for ease and maintenance and repair. Design for upgradability and adaptability. And design for disassembly and reassembly. Okay. <clears throat> um, this is another pro, uh, project by Arup um, in, in, in the UK where uh, they started uh, this uh, circular economy in a housing project. I will just show a simplet of it. <laughs> We're standing inside the uh, circular building by Arup. This started a number of months ago when we started exploring the idea of the circular economy and asking the question of what would it mean to build a building in circular economy. And for us, it's about starting to ask questions both of ourselves as designers and of the industry about how would you apply circular economy principles to a construction industry. I think we're continuing to, to live in a world where we don't make uh, the best use of the resources that are available to us. Uh, we still have far too many negative impacts on the environment when it comes to the construction sector and other associated industries. So we need to start to rethink how our industry works and how we can become sustainable in a much more holistic and integrated way. At the moment, we work in an industry where we design an object almost like a one-off and then engage the suppliers and then build it as one element. Whereas from day one, we need to think about how will we layer things up? Okay, so now it's a challenge. Okay, um, a circular economy is usually put a challenge to architects to design for flexibility and adaptability. Okay, as actually, um, historically, this is nothing new. If you look into uh, uh, end of life and flexibility and adaptability, so if you look into a uh, history of uh, our traditional. Um, traditional uh, build environment, which is our old uh, uh, kampong's house. Okay, we build them from uh, wood and then uh, normally it's uh, from timber and uh, normally the joint thing is a uh, tongue and groove. And then uh, the, the, the unit is uh, flexible and it's very adaptable. You can even carry the whole house uh, to somewhere else. And if uh, the, um, the house needs to be dismantled, you can just easily dismantle because it use uh, tongue and groove. So the idea of the circular economy is, so, is already been there in, uh, in our, um, in our um, built environment, especially in Malaysia. So think, uh, uh, as an architect, we need to think on uh, how we can implement this in the modern architecture. All right, so what's next? <coughs> Um, companies uh, in the future, okay, especially post COVID, must see circularity as a business opportunity. All right, but this requires action leadership. Clearly, we are still a long way from having a truly circular economy, but there are, uh, you know, several reasons uh, why your business uh, want to get involved, not least the size of the opportunity. All right, look into the corporate social responsibility in terms of long term security coming up with a disruptive new business model and anticipating new regulation and policy. Because this not only needed um, cooperation from the uh, bottom up, it's also from top, top down, which is from the government. Okay, uh, five directions for circular business model design. So how we want to look into it? Uh, circular supplies, okay, supply fully renewable, recyclable or biodegradable uh, resource inputs to support circular production. 
we look into resource recovery, eliminate material leakage, and maximize economic value of product return flows. Product life extension, extend the current lifestyle of a product, repairing, upgrading, and reselling. So uh, it's not only you know just sell and then let the products uh, end up in the waste, but you need to prolong the lifespan by providing maintenance of the product so that you don't need to consider too much on the reproduction of the of the units and then sharing platforms stimulating collaboration among products user and then treat the product as a service products are used by one or many customers by means of a lease or pay of use arrangement so imagine uh, in one unit of uh, apartment, in one unit of housing, for example, maybe like uh, that Sophie mentioned just now, uh, 5,000 residents. Um, the residents only pay for what they use, okay, rather than purchase the, um, for example, the, the, the usage of the, of the stuff, okay. They don't, they don't need to pay maybe for the, for the car, they don't need to pay for the, um, for the usage of the, maybe uh, a washing machine, but the washing machine can be shared by, uh, by the community. So the sharing components is also part of the circular economy because you reduce the, the production of the, uh, the entire materials. Okay, um, I will just uh, maybe close this uh, introduction part with uh, some useful resources. If you are still getting to grips with what the circular economy means for your company, uh, the circular economy block series may help answer your question. For example, bio regional uh, CE block series, and then uh, you can go into CE, CEO guide by WBCSB, and then Alan MacArthur, of course, uh, the one that uh, properly propagate this uh, circular economy, and then by UNEP International Resource, okay, uh, to, to know about global material flows and uh, resource productivity, <coughs> and then also. If your company already uh, maybe implemented some of this circular economy, there's an award okay, uh, given by this uh, UNEP International that gives award for a company who uh, propagate the idea of the circular economy. So welcome to this uh, new world of uh, circular economy and uh, thank you and stay circular, stay safe and stay home. Thank you so much. Back to you, Sophie. I think, um we pass straight to uh, Prof. Dato Elias. Over to you, uh, Prof. Dato. Okay, thank you very much. I, I'm going to open my PowerPoint. Uh, uh, okay. While Prof. Dato getting ready, uh, just now the sign-in code just popped up. Uh, onto your screen, uh, you need that uh, to complete your participation report, uh, which uh, you will have to access by a link at the end uh, of the session. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there will be two codes for CPD point, sign in code and sign out code, and answer questionnaire through a link. Are you ready, Dato? Come uh, on. <laughs> I have to go back. I have to share my yeah, you share screen. Your screen. Eh? Yeah. Um, Temp online series, as I mentioned, is a permanent feature. Uh, it will stay on even after MCO. The idea of this online, the objective or the main vision for this uh, online series is actually to uh, bring uh, closer between uh, knowledge provider and listeners or um, knowledge seekers. So, um, so this online series is made for members and by members. So I would like to uh, give an open invitation to architects and members who would like to take up the session for whatever interest that you would like to share. You can uh, email it to pemonlineseries at gmail.com. Uh, we will have a look at it and contact you for further discussion. Uh, Prof. Datuk now is ready, so over okay. to you, Datuk. Okay, thank you, Sophie. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, this is my first time really for 
this kind of webinar. And I hope uh, things will be okay. Thank you, uh, Dr. Zairul. I think you have given a, a very good uh, starting point for uh, understanding circular economy. And I think you have made my, my, my job easier. Anyway, um, I will go through the basic as the objective of this webinar is introduction and introduction to circular economy. So most of the point that I'm going to give actually is a repeat of what Dr. Jairo has mentioned, except that I have put them in, in point forms. So a circular economy, economy is of course management of resources, of wealth, of a place or a country. Yeah? So circular is a, another approach and Dr. Zairo has mentioned this very extensively. Okay, the, in terms of definition, I am going to present two definitions. One is by the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, who promotes uh, uh, this uh, circular economy. Of course, Ellen MacArthur was the woman who, who went around the world on the boat, yeah, on the rowing boat. And uh, this is the definition by this foundation is circular economy is one that is restorative and regenerative by design and uh, also which aims to keep the, the product components materials at the highest uh, utility and value at all times and of course distinguishing between the waste the waste are technical uh, between two cycles one is technical the other one is biological the other one is by an organization called waste and resources <laughs> very fitting it's a circular economy in which they also mentioned about recover and regenerate. So my presentation actually is, um, I want to focus on the word regenerate. So we find that this is very central to me, two designers, uh, two designers like architects, regenerate is regenerative thinking is something that is promoted by circular economy. Okay, uh, first let's look, I think uh, Dr. Zaro has mentioned a few of the school of thoughts that influence the development of uh, circular economy. To me, the first one is by uh, architect William McDonough, his work on cradle to cradle. And he did this with a partner, uh, Michael Brongat, who has a background in chemistry and chemical. The second one, I think Dr. Zaro has played a video uh, by the on this uh, performance economy by Walter Stahil. He, he is actually an architect also. And the third one is the one that is to me is, uh, to me I give this uh, most importance, uh, regenerative design by John Lyon, who is an, a landscape architect. And of course he published this in the early, I think 70s, at least if I'm not mistaken. And of course we know the, the work of uh, on biomimicry, which looks at ecology, nature, and so on. And then there are other school of thoughts. The other one is industrial ecology by Pross and Galopoulos from General uh, Electrics. And of course, um, the natural capital by Lobins and Hawking. And of course, another one by, this is Blue Economy, Club of Rome, limits to development and so on. So these are the school of thoughts that influence the development of circular economy, which is a uh, system that uh, looks at the total uh, total issue of resources and waste. Okay, uh, to simplify, I, I like to put uh, as in the abstract, circular economy focuses on resource and waste and how we manipulate or manage resource and waste that makes a difference. Eh? If at the moment uh, or for, for a long time we have been doing this by linear way, which I call this cradle to grave, you, you live and you die. And uh, of course we are doing recycling now and this is halfway, we still cannot reduce the waste. Initially full of waste, now reduce, we are doing less, uh, less good, yeah? less of the waste, but we are going towards, sorry, but we, but what we want to do is to really make it zero waste yeah, by doing circular economy. So the next diagram shows um, this is circular economy, the one that, <laughs> that looks like tie, neck tie, orange neck tie, and we have the two loops, 
that goes around. One, these are the ways. If we go by by the linear linear process, we end up with a waste, a date we are dead, yeah? And then if we go by the circular economy, we have two ways which we call nutrients. One is for biological, the other one is technical. Okay, the three principles have been mentioned by Dr. Zairul, design out waste and pollution, uh, keep products and materials in use, and uh, lastly, regenerate natural resource, uh, natural system. To me, that is where designers should focus. Okay, there is a framework actually that, uh, that lays down six action areas for us to approach a circular economy, which in a short form is called resolve. So let's just look at it. Uh, regenerate, R, uh, R E for regenerate, that comes first. Eh? For renewable energy, materials, reclaim, retain, restore, return, and uh, return recovered biological sources to the biosphere. Second one is share, sharing, mentioned by Dr. Jaru. We are doing a lot of this at the moment. Reuse, second hand, also we have been doing this, prolonged life through maintenance and designing for durability. The third one is optimize, is increasing performance uh, related to industry, a lot of related, uh, industrial processes, efficiency of products, remove waste again, and leverage on big data. This is an area that is coming up very, very important, big data, eh? automation, and so on. And uh, the fourth one is look, remanufacture product or component, recycle materials again, or some upcycle. Eh? And digest in terms of biological material, extract, and so on. And of course, virtualize. Uh, we are a lot of virtual things now. We are doing a virtual meeting, a virtual yes, meeting, and so on, ebooks, and so on, uh, and dematerialize eh? online shopping. A lot happening now in our <laughs> pandemic situation. So, this has become very important. And of course, exchanges, E for exchanges, replace all with, uh, I remember last year, our Minister for Energy and Environment in the previous government, during one of the occasions, she mentioned replace to include in the three R. Eh? So replace is another issue. And apply new technologies, 3D, we are doing printing, we are doing it. And choose new products and so on. Eh? Multimodal transport. Okay, um, this, uh, Framework has been applied by Arup. Arup has been very active with uh, Ellen MacArthur uh, Foundation, especially looking at the built environment. And so he has uh, applied this to construction to, to the built environment, and this is the in terms of what they have done. The regenerate this the potential is low according to them. Share is high. Optimize is uh, medium. Loop is high. Virtualize medium and exchange is medium. But to me, regenerate, in my own opinion, regenerate is very, very important. And it's especially in our design work. <clears throat> so what I'm, I'm, I'm saying here is that circular economy advocates generative thinking, generative development, and generative design. So generative design is, is parallel to circular economy. It's a principle that calls for uh, product and services to contribute positively to the system. We are designing something uh, to improve the situation. For instance, a building which has no bills. That means the, the building doesn't have to pay any uh, power, electricity bill, water bill, and so on. So that is the situation, I think, uh, what circular economy is promoting. And this can be done through regenerative design, which designers should look for. There are three pillars to the regenerative design. <coughs> of course, this, uh, <laughs> we have been doing this and we have been looking at this, of course, in a different way. Uh, what has been proposed is climate and energy is together as one, and ecology and carbon as one, and the last one, of course, is human, human being, yeah? human well-being. And there are also now tools that look at uh, well buildings and so on. <coughs> So this is a framework for regenerative design, starting from below. Uh, if you look at it below here is a degenerative situation. This is the uh, regenerative situation where we start with conventional practice for buildings. We have the green building, green design. We have sustainable design. Now we want to upcycle it or improve to restorative, reconciliatory and 
regenerative that the, our eventual aim regenerative uh, situation of aim oh, of, course, of course this is another approach which has been promoted by the author of cradle to cradle eh? william mcdonald he has been promoting designers to build buildings like trees and for planners to plan cities like forests and that is based on the fact that trees can play a very very important role in our environment to address circular uh, regenerative design as well as uh, circular economy and these details can be found in the <clears throat> in the no, this, what i have put here okay so what does an urban environment based on circular principle would look like eh? this is by the ellen MacArthur foundation the built environment would evolve to offer more than just shelter as buildings and uh, gen and it will generate uh, rather than to just consume power and food eh? and in some cases uh, built to improve the air surrounding the building i think this has been done in europe somewhere i can't remember it's a town hall eh? and through vertical and urban farming and this is uh, coming up very nicely we are doing it singapore has been doing it very much very, very into, into this very much eh? and the city would have supply their own food food security uh, reusing food waste and sewage in the clothes and local loops to produce vegetables fish and so on as well as, as, well as uh, energy eh? and cities would have a multi-modal mobility um, how do I... oh, oh, my <laughs> i have to go back I can see the right side. Um, cities will have multimodal instruments of transportation and they would have the individual mobility as a last mile solution. And this would mean uh, better utilize vehicles and less parking areas. And these areas can be taken up for green, greeneries and so on by planners. Eh? And lastly, housing and offices would be modular, smart and shareable with durable mixed use uh, design in a modular way and constructed with loop and non-toxic materials as had been done by Arup. And uh, <clears throat> infrastructure would be highly utilized thanks to adoption of shared and flexible office spaces and flexible smart and modular home. So we, we are already on smart cities uh, no, mode, so this would apply. So I would end up with uh, trying, uh, playing one, one video only, and this will last about six minutes. Uh, please, Secretary, can you play this construction industry video? Mummy, the climate is changing, so must construction. Nature of the problem. The construction sector is based on standards of productivity that have not evolved over the past 25 <laughs> years. Linear and outdated production and demolition processes cause a ratio of output to inputs worse than most industries. This inefficiency, coupled with huge resource requirements, make construction one of the most damaging human activities out there. Let's analyze the currently implemented Take, Make, Waste economic model. Take. A constant demand for new buildings translates into an ever-growing annual extraction of non-renewable natural resources, requiring massive use of energy and causing greenhouse gas emissions on top of other environmental damages, like deforestation, desertification, acidification and eutrophication, depletion of the stratospheric ozone layer, air and water pollution. Make. The making and use of a building also takes a heavy toll on the earth in terms of land use and energy consumption. Furthermore, modern buildings have an average lifespan of 100 years, and yet they are still being constructed without sustainability principles in mind. This means they will be a lifelong source of pollution, extremely difficult and lengthy to rectify. Waste. There is no adequate management of construction and demolition waste or recycled materials. Often valuable resources like steel, aluminum, stone, concrete, brick, ceramic, and wood are not properly identified, separated, and valued. Problem quantification. 
The construction industry is responsible for the emission of massive amounts of CO2, hence heavily contributing to one of the central environmental problems of our time, climate change. Between 35 and 40 percent of the national energy in the U.S. and Europe is used annually to excavate the earth, transport raw materials and equipment, create structural steel shapes, pump cement, and perform all the other activities required to complete a building. On top of the energy consumed during construction, we cannot ignore the ongoing CO2 emissions that derive from the installation of outdated and inefficient heating, ventilation, lighting, and cooling systems. Besides the need uh, to use if more okay sustainable you, structural uh, we materials and design, uh, extend the link construction to also must improve to, management uh, processes. See, as studies suggest, between uh, 10 and 15 percent of resources. We are running out of time. Uh, okay, I yeah. think we, it, it's quite important to have a moderation uh, session. Okay. I okay. actually have a few uh, questions to uh, panelists, uh, to the speakers. Um, which is quite crucial to set direction for our uh, discussion, uh, group discussion uh, on this circular economy. Um, first, I would like to ask, uh, actually both speakers, but maybe start with uh, Professor Dato. Uh, what's your view on this? Uh, what is your view on the current state of awareness and implementation of circular economy in building industry and government policies in Malaysia? And where are we in Malaysia as compared to other countries, uh, world and regional? Uh, what's your observation on this? Yeah, thank you, Sophie. Um, I think as far as awareness, I think there is awareness in the government at government policy level. And I think in terms of uh, players, some players in the building industry as well as NGOs. Huh? But I think for the general public, perhaps uh, there is lacking yeah, because of the big number. So, and other issues. Eh? And also, I think our government has been addressing uh, these uh, issues, sustainable issues, which are complementing, which are the goals uh, of a uh, circular economy through our five year plans. You know, we have been doing this for, for I think now we are in the RMK 11. Eh? So, we have been doing this for 50 years. We have been, at, we have been um, addressing, uh, you know, Agenda 21, Millennium Development Goals, and then now Sustainable Development Goals. I think we have put into place uh, policies and uh, guidelines as well as uh, regulations, especially in terms of energy, uh, environment, um, uh, um, integration of sustainable production, consumption, and especially waste. Eh? Waste, and now we have smart cities as well. So I think. We are not doing too badly, but in terms of compared, compared to developed world, of course, we have just started. But in the region, I think we are second to Singapore. Um, uh, Dr. Zak, what is your view on this, your observation as compared to uh, Netherlands, your experience in Netherlands? Uh, your voice is off. Okay. Uh, when, I, uh, when I started my PhD, I uh, was back in 2012. Um, circular economy has already been, uh, you know, it's uh, already being implemented in uh, uh, most of the government uh, policy. So it's been, uh, I, th I think at that time, it's already been implemented, not, not on the awareness. So um, <laughs> what they have done is that uh, the government is uh, working very close with the industry and then um, civil society organization, knowledge institution. So it's a top-down approach and uh, the government knows about it and then it's being distributed to the uh, you know, institution, the industry. So it's being well, well, I think, implemented. Uh, but again, I think um, for Malaysia case, uh, it's good if the government, uh, you know, uh, inculcate this and then, uh, you know, so that the, the lower Part will just adopt it and then uh, to to uh, to implement it in in the in the, uh, the, the lower tier of the society. Uh, basing on the presentations as well as your response to my first question, um, I think my observation is that our approach at the moment is still at 
sustainable development goal and this energy efficiency, where a circular economy is actually uh, much bigger than that because it's, it's a framework. It's a, it's a system tool uh, to keep everything uh, in the loop. Um, so if government step up the goals into circular economy uh, in particular, do you think that we, our industry is ready considering that there could be some industry who may be out of the loop, meaning that it's not applicable to the loop, and whether the circular economy has a better benefit uh, to social and economy in Malaysia. Uh, can we take this as, a, as an advantage? Uh, maybe Datuk want to start first? Okay, uh, I think, I think we, we are already on the bandwagon, you know, but uh, how far and how fast we can go depends a lot of uh, circumstances. Eh? Firstly, our preparedness, are we prepared? Uh, do we have the resources? Do we have the knowledge? Have we done enough research for application or adaptation into our situation? And of course, uh, uh, the economic as well as political situation. I think that depends. That keeps on changing. Yeah? So it depends very much on circumstances. But first, we have to build up, build our, build up our capacity in understanding, and skill, the tools, and so on to apply, to understand and to apply this. And we can start with design, you know. And we can start with the the, 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 the education, <laughs> educating our current student who will later be involved in this. Okay, uh, Dr. Zak, um, you are, you also specialize in new business model. So can secular economy create new business uh, model? Before you answer that, I just what would like to uh, remind participants the pop up code. Uh, take note on that. Um, yes, Dr. Zak, can, can this circular economy create new business model and create a new economy? Uh, yes, in fact, uh, as I mentioned in the, uh, my previous slide, um, with adopting this circular economy, actually new, um, new workforce and new uh, job opportunity will appear because uh, you, um, you prolong the, the life cycle, the product, so that involve it will involve a lot of uh, um, manpower needed to operate those uh, production. So, you know, uh, uh, we're talking about uh, a disruptive uh, business model as well, where uh, a new typology of business model, which is uh, we uh, never heard before, uh, you know, can be, um, can be created uh, using this, uh, because circular economy is just an umbrella. So it's up to you to actually, um, you know, remodel according to the principle of the circular economy, and then, uh, yeah, I'm sure uh, the profit will be uh, even uh, more if you really, uh, you know, adopt the, the the principle of the circular economy. Yes. Okay. Uh, um. I, there are questions from the participants. Um. I will select a few. Uh, there's one here from. Uh, our past president, uh, Chan Xiong An, um, the repurpose of existing uh, is a priority uh, or take priority. Should government actually prioritize this, repurpose rather than you know, saving energy and all that? What do you think? Dr. Zach? All right. Um, I've always said, uh, take an uh, example from Netherlands because uh, I was there for, for five years. So I kind of uh, uh, really uh, get into um, the system and also understand about the government uh, efforts and also I involve in the LMA after uh, in, in the UK. So uh, under the Dutch government, they put this under circular Dutch economy by 2050. So they have this uh, 2050 target where you know all these uh, production processes you raw materials more efficiently so there are goals for a circular economy specific to circular economy because we heard a lot about the SDG about the all the sustainable goal actually sustainable is only uh, one part of a circular economy so economy is much more huge uh, more than that sometimes you talk about sustainable but then uh, how to operate in a way that the business can operate so it's a missing link there. But circular economy, you can uh, you know you can uh, produce everything under circular economy as a uh, uh, 
uh, Datuk already mentioned just now the the resolve uh, framework uh, those are actually some of the elements that we can start uh, in in Malaysia and uh, also can implement in uh, in, uh, in in Malaysia as well um Dato, I would like you to ask the next question. Um, this is from um, Faris Mustafa. Uh, he says that circular economy seems like an ideal option for a blank slate scenario, i.e. new buildings. Are there any examples af uh, applicable for refurbishment, uh, refurbishment or reuse of existing buildings? What do you think? Um, I think not in Malaysia, I think. Not in Malaysia. But I, I agree, a lot, a lot of these are applicable to new buildings. For the moment, and it's easier to implement for new buildings rather than the refurbishment. So maybe for next session, we yeah. can share some of yeah. those examples yeah. as a case yeah. study. Yeah. Um, another question, oh, before that, uh, just a reminder to everyone, uh, we will uh, open, uh, we'll continue the session until 6.15 for those who want to stay on. But before you leave, make sure that you wait for the link uh, to access to questionnaires in order to complete your participation. Uh, it will be pop up later uh, once I give uh, direction to the uh, te technical team. Um, okay, I have another interesting question here from uh, Date Novina. Uh, stakeholders need to be informed of the framework. The approach requires rethinking on the part of designers through builders, banking system and owners and, uh, and all that. So where, where should we start on this as architects, community? Uh, Prof. I think this is maybe starting with PEM, <laughs> public education. What we are doing is educating. First, I think we have to educate architects. <laughs> And uh, among us, I do not claim to be expert. I'm also learning. Eh? So we, we have to do it. Even overseas, this is a developing area. You know? There is no finite end yet. Eh? It's always developing, especially this is such a big area as Dr. Zero mentioned. Econ uh, circular economy is huge. You know? There's so many angles we can look at it. But here we should focus on our, our role, responsibilities as designers of the environment. Eh? So, and of course, to the built environment. I think it's uh, awareness and then uh, have to have our, build our capacity. And we can start with our students, you know, we are the future. It is not easy to, to move on to the full circular economy mode. Um, I think this will take time. I think, as mentioned by Dr. It's a destructive, destructive uh, innovation. <laughs> so we have to dismantle a lot of uh, structures especially industries. Uh, perhaps part of our agenda uh, at, uh, from the university level and uh, also as at the professional level, maybe we should uh, suggest to the government to create incentives for new business that uh, focus on repurpose and upcycling uh, and preventing uh, from waste. You know? um, I think we, we, we go to uh, our last question. It's actually from me. Um, our, as I mentioned earlier, our main goal is to have a session uh, to develop a framework or a loop uh, for 2,500 uh, residential community where this community will be self-sustained, less independent from uh, central infrastructure. Minimum goes in, nothing goes out. Uh, Prof. Dato, based on your experience and, and uh, observation, do you think that this is a viable idea? Uh, at the moment, just to inform that uh, we have a system, example, uh, a system, uh, somebody who can provide a system that can burn domestic waste into basic carbon. So this basic carbon, you can uh, put it back as soil or you can repurpose it for building blocks. So this is the kind of things that PAM is start collecting uh, and compiling information so that this, uh, this uh, technology will become available to architects or practitioners for implementation. But there are other things like waste and you know, water and solar and all that. What do you think? Would this be a viable project, uh, Dato? Yes, I think this is a very noble idea and I think we should have started this a long time ago. <laughs> And we have uh, parties, uh, for instance, uh, CIDB and so on, which 
should actually look into this, the, the other ones, you know, uh, construction uh, industry. And um, I think to do this, we have to involve all stakeholders, you know, stakeholders, of course, government, we have to come in. And we have to prepare ourselves to look what, what are already available and what needs to be researched into. And this is where the universities can come in. And also what studies can be done, you know, consultants by consultants. And uh, this has to be a coordinated effort uh, involving all stakeholders as much as possible. And also I would suggest we use the regenerative approach, you know, regenerative development, because that's where it will not it will end up. It, will, it needs that kind of thinking in order to, to get to the goal. Um, actually, in our group, uh, Dr. Z has agreed to be the convener to compile all this information so that it becomes uh, like a booklet uh, where we can share with uh, all the stakeholders and players, industry players. So, Dr. Z, what would be your wish uh, to make this possible? Uh, okay, um, I think I agree to involve a lot. Uh, all stakeholders so that we can have uh, you know all these um, ideas uh, to be put uh, on the on the table and then we can you know come up with a booklet that okay this is a um, I don't know blueprint or it can be like a, a starting point uh, for circular economy in Malaysia because I must say that um, even there's a bit of pieces of uh, circular economy and um, um, elsewhere, but it's not really united. It's not really being compiled in a very uh, systematic. So maybe it's time to actually put it uh, into uh, one systematic um, module, and then yeah, this can be the first uh, first uh, way uh, how to approach it. <coughs> okay. Uh, there are actually a lot more questions from the participants. So. Uh, for what, what, what we're going to do is that we will compile all these uh, questions and we will uh, pass it on to the speakers so that they probably address uh, these questions in our next session on circular economy. I think that will be more appropriate rather than uh, discussing more in detail here. So um, uh, let's end the session today. Thank you very much. I think it's a very, it has been a very productive uh, session.